Cause Nick and Mike's top 100 games But does anyone care what they have to say? Lit. I know I don't Cause they may doubt, they may scream They may say some things that are plain wrong Dab on it, dab on it But they are dumb, dumb bing-bongs Matthew Juice better <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Murphy. I'm Nick Murphy. We are the Brothers Murp up here on the Dice Tower doing a top one hundo. Dice Tower. Dang. Welcome, welcome. So uh, we we we, we want to give our top one hundred. That's it. Yeah, you know, I'm, we're, not gonna, I'm not even gonna apologize for it. No, no, we were asked. We were asked to do it, and we were like, of course, like Dang. that sounds like a super fun time. And we were, first, we were like, oh man, is it gonna be okay? Because we have very very similar taste in games. So it's like, no, it's probably a fair amount of crossover, but we think it's totally fine. But yeah, so we we're like, oh, but you know what? Like, let's go for it. We've never done it before. Nope. So this is gonna be super super fun. We got a whole hundred games to go through. It's wild. I'm so, so excited, though. Me, too. I just want to get right into it. Now, yes. I know what some people are thinking. You know, the Brothers Murph are clearly sponsored by Restoration Games, so it's only going to be their games on the list. I just want to let you know right now, we're not bought. We're not bought at all. All right, so don't expect it just a bunch of sponsorships and plugs and weird stuff like that, okay? Yeah, okay, you know what? We're our own people. You know, right, we make we're our own decisions. We're pure board gamers, and with that, I think we should get right into number 100. What do you think? 100? Let's do it. All Real right. quick, though. Yo. What just missed your list? We got to hit oh. that. Okay. Number 101? Yes. Vegas Showdown. Ooh, that's Maybe tough. if it had any better quality of components. <laughs> uh, better at all. It's tough. Mine doesn't have that problem. Mine is Caverna. And the reason it's Caverna is because another game which we'll call up on the list, has 100% replaced it to the point where I don't ever need to really play it again. I'm so, so excited. That being said, that's our 101s. Let's get into that 100. Bam. 100. Okay, so we got number 100. Okay, so I'll go ahead and go my 100 first. My 100 is a game that we need to play more of, for sure. And it's a game based off just one of my favorite IPs of all time, and that is the Dresden Files cooperative card game. Mm. I like this game a lot. It has some problems with it, but it's it's based on the Dresden Files, so I yeah. have to love it, and I do like it. But it's one you of those games, it's a card game, as I said, it's a co-op game, and it's very difficult, but it's one of those games where a lot of times, whether or not you win or lose, comes out to the the cards drawn like yeah. there are sometimes you get a bad draw and you're just like we might as well just start over again yeah. and then sometimes it's super easy so it's a little swingy but i do really like the system mm -hmm. you are going through each book of the dresden files there is a grip of fan services by evil hat games who've always done stuff with jim butcher and the dresden files yeah. and i love the fan service and i really do like the game but there are sometimes it can be a little frustrating which is why it's not higher on my list it's yeah. the squeaker it made it at 100 and i do love the dresden files cooperative card game i love the dresden files so so much it's my third favorite book series of all time i love it love it love it and this game is great yeah, but it could be a little better, which is why it's my 100, but I do still really love the game. There are still many games worse than it, clearly. Obviously. It's in your top 100. Yes. But yeah, I, I dig that. I definitely like it, and you're right. It's very uh, respectful to the series and stuff. So, like, if you're a Dresden Files fan, like, you should get it. You're going to like it. Yeah. Feel you the know. fan service? It's there. Boom. What's your top my 100? My number 100, my squeaker, is also based on stories. It's based on fairy tales. My number 100 is Grim Forest. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So Grim Forest is a really, really? Okay, simple, cool. light game Sorry, with, surprising. like, the dopest components. Pretty much. Yeah, Druid oh. City knocked it out of the park. Okay, yeah. yeah, so Vegas Showdown didn't quite make the list <laughs> because of components. Grim it's Forest made the list because the components. Yeah. Like, the components are amazing. It's a fun game, too. Yeah, it's a game in which you're trying to build. You're the three little pigs, essentially, and you're trying to build your house. You're trying to build your straw, wood, and brick house. Uh, and you're trying to do this by gaining resources in order to do that. And, and the best way to gain resources is to go to one of the locations that no one else goes to. It's kind of like history on that way. Yeah, we're trying to go where selection, no yeah. one else goes. Uh, but it's very simple. And then they have these cool uh, cards that you can play that kind of are like little events and things like that. But it's just straight up like try to go where, you know, you try to outfox your opponents and outplay. You're like, I think this guy's going to go to the four. I'm pretty sure I'm going to the town, you know, and it's yeah. just very light, but like. The components and the quality, I mean... It's beautiful. Just yes. the insert is a house, and the pieces are unreal. They it's really the are. most wonderfully overproduced game. I'm so happy it's so overproduced. I want to get it because, like, it just looks incredible. Yeah. The art is great. The components are fantastic. So, And it's a nice, simple, light game that you can teach to anybody. It's true. And, like, people understand fairy tales. And, again, and if you want to get people into the hobby, that's a good way to do it because they yeah. go, like... 
dang, yeah. this is what board games are like. Yeah, you and know? the cards it's like, feature like your favorite fairy tale characters, yeah. the things that we all recognize these characters. So it's just really fun and light. And yeah, Grim Forest made it. Did not end. make my list, but I, I, if I played it more, we've only played it a couple times. We played it more. I it might squeak in. Yeah. I do really like it though. A yeah, lot. it's definitely a solid game. That's my number one hundred ninety nine. Bang. 99. Ah. Mm. God, coffee is so necessary. Mm. Am I right, though? Never do a top 10 without it, man. Whew. All right. 99, Mike. Do your 99, oh, man. man. My number 99 <laughs> is a uh, programming game featuring robots and minions. It's mechs versus minions. Oh, this high. I would have thought this would be low. This would have been um, higher on your list, rather. Nope. It's 99. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good explanation. Nope. Just, nope. That's where it is, apparently. <laughs> uh, Mechs vs. Minions is a fun game. It's based it, it, or set in uh, the League of Legends world, yeah. right? It's by Riot Games. They like are just this huge company with basically unlimited money because they have the very popular uh, video games. Yeah. They're like, we're just going to make a board game that has crazy components, and we're just not going to charge that much for it because we don't really care if we make money off it. Yeah. It's just for fun. And we all reap the benefits of that. Pretty much. But it's a fun cooperative programming game, which is something I appreciate because we play like Robo Rally and stuff, which I like. Yeah. But like, you know, it just you just you can get messed up so easy and it's hard enough to do a programming game well anyway. That's true. In Mechs vs. Minions it never feels personal because you're not trying yeah. to hit each other. It's you against the game. Yeah. So, you know, and you get your program all messed up and you're not like, dang, Nick, leave me alone for two yeah, seconds. Yeah, you're yeah, trying totally. to go get this thing. And so That's there's... crucial for me in a programming game. It really is. Absolutely. Like... And it's a fun campaign uh, that we've been slowly working our way through so you get to unlock and open up some things and get better powers. But also you can just kind of play whatever scenario you want yeah. and it gives you different maps uh, and there's modular boards and all that. It's just a lot of fun. There's a ton of bits and just things and minis all over the place. And you're just smashing up uh, dudes. And it's yeah. just, yeah, it's a fun game. Yeah, it's a good. Yeah, I do like Mechs for Minis a lot. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not higher on the list because like it's kind of a bear. It's like we can only play it once in a while because there's just a lot of stuff it's, to it. It's a big setup and takedown for yeah, sure. Yeah, so I'm just for like, sure. you know, it's never, never going to be like the number one. But it's just a really fun game. Yeah, solid for sure. Makes for a great co-op experience. Yeah. All right, My99 is a real-time game. Well, there's parts of real-time to it, and that is a game called Flatline. Is that good? It's so good. Not good. Great. It's it's the best part of waking up. It, it really is, dude. Yeah. It really is. But Flatline, flatline is, it's ha you're glad when you wake up in Flatline because it means your patient didn't die. You yeah. know what I mean? No. And so it's one of those things where Flatline is a is a sequel to the game Fuse by Renegade Game. Fuse is a game where you're rolling die. It's a real-time game. And mm -hmm. You're trying to defuse bombs. But in Flatline, I love because Flatline takes place directly after Fuse where the bomb didn't get defused and everyone got yeah. blown as up. As soon as you fail. And you're essentially working in a hospital. And you're working in a hospital. It kind of is like science fictiony techie yeah. hospital kind futuristic. of futuristic and you but the best part about it is fuse is 10 minutes of crazy dice rolling yeah flatline is one minute of dice rolling and placing your dice, and then it stops and then you do a bunch of stuff and you sit here and you plan and you yeah, talk you and talk da -da -da, to each other and you go okay we ready 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 okay boom one minute dude da -da 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 -da, and then you go okay then you go back to the thing and it's just it's 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 so fun and it's so great and it's really hard still but Fuse takes a lot out of you. Because it's so much stress. It's so yeah. much like, oh, the whole it's time. It's just moving as fast as you can. And Flatline has that, but it's broken up. And that, to me, is so nice. And I mm -hmm. really love Flatline. And it's gorgeous. It's Renegade Games. You know, it's always beautiful. And and the dice are great. And I, I love the planning and the talking and, and really trying to, like, be like, okay, how can we do this? But then all your plans go out the window because you all you all roll your die. Yeah. And you're like, cool, we got nothing we needed. What are we going to do now? And you're adapting on the fly and bad stuff is happening all the time. It's just great. Flatline is a wonderful, wonderful uh, real-time game that if you like the concept of real-time but they stress you out a little too much, this is kind of a good... It's, about, um, it's more playable. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good uh, alternative play. for that because it, it breaks it up, which is really, really nice. So my 99 is Flatline. I like it a lot. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Boom. Done talking about flatline now. Good, you were you were you were on one there. I don't think you breathed for a whole <laughs> minute. Like it's really really great, and like it's, because the point is you get to stop every now and again. Yeah, like I'm not talking about it. Keep talking. It is crazy. We were just talking about Dresden Files. Yeah. I've been listening to all of all of them on uh, Audible lately. Oh, really? Dude, it's awesome. It's super easy and like affordable and stuff oh, like that. Nice. It's a great way to like listen to your favorite books. Oh, dude, I gotta check that yeah. out. It's yeah. great. Audible's it's great. sweet, man. Audible's right, cool, awesome. Cool. Yeah. 
All right, everybody. My number 98 is uh, is a, a game. It's a game. It's a board game. Oh. It's a game called Time Stories. Time Stories is my number 98. Time Stories, hmm. I would think, would be higher on my list. But it's not. But and that's fine. It's you're still, a hater. So. It's, yeah, I hate the game is what I'm getting at. No, it's still in my top 100. I really, really like Time Stories. I don't, I don't know why it's not. The experience is always great. My, I guess my biggest problem with time stories is there's so many times where I'm just like, I don't know what we do in this situation in terms yeah. of like the rules because they can't put all the scenarios in the rules because it'll, it takes spoilers and stuff like that. So there's been so many times we've played it where we had to like look up online without trying to get spoilers. Yeah. And, but nonetheless, Take all that out of there. The experience of Time Stories is really unlike any other. It's a game, a time traveling game, a storytelling game, where you go through each scenario once, and they're essentially kind of a big puzzle and a big riddle a lot of times. Yeah, you're trying to solve some mystery or Some other. mystery. And it takes it do, does time travel really, really well, which is hard for board games. Yeah. But it's got a bunch of different scenarios, and you play through each scenario once, and then you can buy a new expansion. And we've done a couple of them, and I really, really love it. I love the immersion into it, because you get into it, and man, you are in that world, and you yeah. are just trying to remember. And it's kind of choose your own adventure in a in a in a way. And it's just it's I love it for the idea it is. I mean, I think whoever thought of it is brilliant, and the fact yeah. they pull it off really, really well is amazing. And it just in terms of straight game experience. It's way up there. Agreed. You know, and and I think the fact that we can't play it too much, and and the fact that we play it once and then we're kind of like all right let's not play it for like n a number of months and then yeah. we'll maybe get back into it i think that's why it's as low as it is i mean again it's still really high it's in my top 100 but i really like the game um and maybe if we played a little more scenarios we'd like it a little more but so far it's at 98 i still really love it i think in terms of immersion and theme integration it's one of the best games out there yeah. i mean absolutely one of the best games and out that's there. like you know it always comes down to that people talk about what what makes a game rank high on the list is it that you play it the most or yeah. it's like the experience is the greatest and like it's not always about how often you play it no, it's no. a really good time so you know it's like hey yeah time stories maybe doesn't hit the table too often but when it does it's, it's a great. great interesting immersive experience yes yeah. that's, that's all you ask for in a game yeah so that's yeah. my 98 time stories boom my number 98 is a much lighter game hey um i'd say it's darn near gateway e uh it is ticket to ride europe Oh, specifically Europa. Europa. Um, I to this day have never played the original Ticket to Ride. I was going to ask if the original Ticket to Ride was higher on your list because there the original I, Ticket to Ride I, is not on my list. I've never played it. Okay, because so there's a consequence like because when we were doing the thing, I was like, should I separate some of the ones we've played? And I was like, yeah, because I think they're different enough. I think it depending on the game. Yeah, and so um, okay, so Europe, so Ticket to Ride Europe. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it's just really fun. Uh, I really appreciate the map. I like they can play you know up to five players, and it was just the first Ticket to Ride I played. Um, and I just really, I just really like it. I like that the, the, the city names and stuff aren't in English. And, yes. and so you get to like, you're like, oh, that's that city. Okay. I know that city. And, um, it's just, you know, ticket to ride in general, whichever one you're playing, is just a great light little kind of set collection. Then building on a map, uh, yeah. uh, game that you can kind of teach to everybody. And just once in a while, I'm like, that's what I want, man. I just want to like sit back and like hope I get that locomotive, you know, and try to build like a yeah. really big route. Um, and that one's really fun. Just because it can accommodate more people, yeah, it's up to stuff. five, and that's yeah. that one particularly. You want to play with more players because yeah. I don't like blocking in those games. It's just not my nature to be like mean and it's block like go people. out, go like out of your way. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh, I'm gonna put this here because you need that spot. I just, it's, I hate doing that in games. It really yeah. makes me feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just my personal way about it. But I like playing with like four or five players because you just can't help get in each other's way, and I like yeah. that. Ticket Ride Europe is not on my list um, because I like normal Ticket to Ride better. Okay. Um, but, uh, and the main reason, cause I don't like the, the train stations. I feel like they're very confusing. Yeah. Well, we didn't play them right for yeah. almost the entire time we've owned that so, game. So, so I, 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 I like US map a little better. The thing I like about the stations is like, if you don't understand or don't care, it's like, just leave know, them out. Don't play with them. Yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, take a, maybe if I played the regular one, maybe that would, would kind of yeah. replace, but to this moment, I have not. So yeah. take a ride's know, always good. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's a great game. It's one of those popular games on the planet for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's easy mass appeal kind of thing but also providing some decisions and stuff so it's not like mass market via monopoly yeah, or something yeah. like that so yeah it's a good game that i think is a really good uh, important piece of our hobby in helping it grow so yeah take a ride to europe that's Boom. 98 all right let's go on 97 97 97
All right, 97, getting into the great games now. Uh, <laughs> finally. Finally. Um, <laughs> these are all amazing games. So this is a game that we own and quite like. It is Lanterns, the Harvest Festival. Nice tile-laying game. <laughs> yeah, <Ooh>. Maybe seven? <laughs> you better be a zero in front of that seven. Jeez. I, I, I fear it would be higher. Wow. Okay. I did too, to be honest. Go ahead, continue continue your, your opinion but again. It's in my top 100 games. It's yes. a game we own. It's clearly a game that we love. Yeah, it's true. It's true. You know, um, it's a great, simple, beautiful tile lane game. And everyone's kind of building out this tableau of these lanterns floating on water. Uh, and it's just like an awesome, another another great game to play. Like if you're playing with people who never played board games, play lanterns. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's got it's got a visual appeal. It's easy mechanics. And then if you want to go one step further, play with the Emperor's Gift expansion. Yeah. And like... You're Makes it a little go. modular a bit, yeah, you know, not too much, bit, but yeah, but it's just a tiny little thing. Uh, it's just a great game where you're trying to put, you know, tiles together and match colors to get uh, cards and it's ultimately a set collection. You turn in those sets to get your scoring tile. So that's it. Um, and it's just a beautiful game, like always goes down smoothly. Uh, yeah. I love lanterns. Yeah. yeah just, lanterns is such a great it's a gift. that keeps on giving, man. That's just my 97. It's yeah. not a sim. That's it. All right, cool. My 97 is a, uh, is a area control game and a game that like, I know it would be higher on my list if we get list if we get it to the table more, and that is a game called Cry Havoc. Mm, yeah. Cry Havoc is a great, great game by Portal Games, and it's uh, an asymmetrical um, uh, area control game where you have yeah. four different factions you can play as, and they all play totally differently. They're all playing. You all want to do different stuff. There's like kind of like the ones for like the Euro gamers, the ones that are like super aggressive, yeah. ones that are kind of more about area control, and then ones that are just like get off my lawn, you know. And it's just like it's really, really great. And they all play differently. They're all super fun to play, and it's a good two-player game. But you really want it at three, in my opinion, and then at four if you can get it. But like I actually probably even like it more at three. Yeah. But it's like, it's just, we don't have that many people qu quite as often as we have just two of we us. We ain't got no friends. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where, at two players, it's fine, but yeah. it's it could be better. And it, it's one of those things where it's just like, so we don't play it that much. I know that if we played it more, it would be higher. I don't know if it'd be yeah. my top 50, but I think it'd be higher up on the list. But Cry Havoc is a really great, wonderful components, um, uh, a really interesting area control game that's also pretty quick it's like 45 minutes yeah maybe an hour yeah it's a quick snappy but big game where you have to be really aggressive depending on the faction you're playing and it's just it's always different depending on the cards you have and and again which group you have and it's just it's a really really solid solid area control game that just doesn't get to the table very often yeah so it's this high up, on my, this low on my list, I guess. It's still a great game. I still love it. Uh, Cry Havoc by Portal Games. Wonderful, wonderful game. Um, that's it. 97 Cry Havoc. Bang. Let's get into 96. Boom. 96. All right, 96. 96, baby. Let's do it. Pow, pow, pow. My 96 is a game that Mike has mentioned already. What? But it's not technically a crossover because it was your 101. Oh. My 96 is Vegas Showdown. Right on. As Mike said, Vegas Showdown is a great game where you're building out a casino and has the worst components ever. Um, but it's an ultimately yeah. a great bidding game. You are bidding on different tiles to put in your casino, really like, different, like slot machines or like a restaurant or a fancy restaurant. And it's got this cool like tier system where you can't put in a fancy restaurant until you put in like a normal restaurant yeah, yeah. and stuff. And you have to put things orthogonally and, and orthogonally, whatever it is. Uh, who knows? No one knows how to say that word. And so... And it's just a really fun game that is completely hamstrung by the fact that it has such garbage components. Like, there's, like, if creases you, and stuff. It's bad, If man. you remade that game with not even great components, just okay components, it would sell like crazy because it's a great game. And it's just... Uh, but nonetheless, the game is so wonderful. I really, really love it. And the first time I played it, I was like, man, this is a cool game. Mm -hmm. I never played a game like this. A bidding game and stuff like that. It was the first one of those kind of games I ever played. Yeah. And I really, really like it. Vegas Showdown is a great game. But it's cool because you're just building out um, you're building out your casino. The only thing you don't have to do there, which I wish was a part of it, is I wish you had to like build the casino from like the ground up. Like I wish, yeah. you, had, I wish you had to put in a foundation. Like a concrete foundation. Because then, of course, you could call... You can call SRS uh, Trucking Incorporated because they have ready mixed concrete. 
Um, if you're in the Northridge area. If you're in the Northridge area, ready to mix concrete, ready to go. You can do that. They will ship over to Vegas, and I wish that was a part of it. Including oh. SRS, ready mix concrete, would be a great addition to the game. Maybe an expansion, better components, I don't know. But I love Las Vegas Showdown. It's a great, great game, and that is my 96? 96. Boom. My 96 is a game that we just played at Dice Tower Con for the first time, and only time, it is Key Flower. Oh, really? So it's okay. one of them key games, man. What? Key games. So in this game, I don't know why I did that you're, you're gonna play one of them key games. Uh, so in this game, you're you're getting like all these like hexagonal, I believe. You're tiles. buying keys from a key you're buying, guy. You're buying keys from a keyman. Yeah, a keyman. Uh, uh, the mystical keyman. <laughs> mystical uh, keyman. And the flowers never appear, which is weird. <laughs> uh, so you're playing like four rounds. You're playing through four seasons yeah. essentially, and you're getting these different tiles and building out your little township, and then you're putting meeples down to uh, you're like bidding essentially. I'm saying, like, I want to yeah. use this thing, and you can, like, use other people's uh, uh, tiles to, to activate and get resources and things like that yeah. in order to build out kind of your best town. It's just one of those types of games. Um, and it's just, it's, it was just a really fun game. So it uses, like, your meeples and different colors matter, and you're trying to, uh, it's kind of like another bidding game. It's kind of interesting. I haven't only, you know, played it briefly. Uh, I just know it was a really great experience in a game I really want to, uh, explore further i think it, i think it'd be higher on your list if we got to play it more. i agree yeah, yeah. you know I mean, that's I, off one for play. sure that's yeah off one play and i'm like i know it's for sure in my top 100 it's a great game yeah. and a really fun experience and we played it at six right? yeah and it yeah. was it like worked really it was good great. at six yeah I, I was like and i'm that is not num something normally i say i'm like it plays at the six i'm like no it does not <laughs> it plays <laughs> up to four maybe maybe um and that one i was actually really fine with you know, and it's just because it's kind of it's snappy and stuff, and you're just kind of deciding if you want to bid on this thing, and people are putting uh, their meeples around if you to actually be able to claim the tile, and then people can put like activate your tile, but then you get to keep those meeples yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So there's this whole like resource thing, you know, with your workers essentially. It's just it was a really interesting, fun game, and played fairly quickly. Yeah. It's just four rounds, uh, and I don't think I even played particularly well, but I know it was really fun, and I want to play it more. Boom. Key flower. Key flower. All right, cool. 96. Yeah, Key Flower's a great game. 96. All right, let's move on to 95. We're plowing through this list. Hmm. 95. All right, folks, we're right here in a 95. Ooh. Now, my 95 is a racing game, ultimately, and you're trying to go around the world in 80 days. Around the world in 80 days is my 95. You like that game that much? I liked it, man. <laughs> it's fun. So you're basically trying to get around the board um and be the first one to do it and it's it's a money management game so you have money and money is what ultimately allows you to move forward spaces um and you there's this whole thing of you have to like basically clear rumors because people think like this guy's gonna go on a hot air balloon around the world he must be crazy he must be crazy so you have to kind of like clear your name yeah which is interesting yeah and there's different spaces that allow you to do different things there's spaces that allow you to just kind of get money there's things that y you can kind of bet on like if i'm if I'm in first place at this point, I'm gonna get this much money. But if I'm fourth, there's this. There's all these ways to um, kind of balance the game, and and there's like catch up mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, but then as you get closer to the end of the game, you want to make sure that you get to the end of the board with as little money as possible. So at the early on, you have to be kind of collecting money so that you yeah. can move. But then you kind of want to time it out just perfectly so you get to the end with basically nothing. And so it's just this interesting game with like. Ultimately, it's pretty easy because there's just yeah. different types of spaces that do stuff, but there's, like, not a lot going on, and you're just trying to, like, be the first to the end of the board, clear your name, and, like, blow all your cash. Yeah. I mean, it's as easy as that. It's kind of like one, two, three, you know? Yeah, it is, one, it two, is like one, three. It's simple, you know? Yeah. It's simple, like... Three-step process. What's, what's it simple like? I'm trying, I'm trying to... Um... I mean, it's kind of like the Pasta Express if you think about it. Oh, it's like Pasta... Oh, you know no. what? You know, it's like, it's like Pasta Express. Yeah. Pasta right. Express is so simple, you know? It's just one, two, three, just cook, strain, and drain. That's it. Instant pasta in a minute. It's so great, so easy. Yeah. And while I was not that huge a fan of that game, I will I will say that it was very easy. And it, it was, it was, I don't know, it, it was, I don't know, it was interesting and fun. Um, but it was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. But, okay, I mean, it doesn't have a revolutionary thermal lid. No, it like doesn't. Like Express. But, what does? but it had, exactly. You it know? had a lot of cool stuff that you could do in a, a game that's fairly easy. And you get to, like, just blow cash. Yeah. That's always great. Oh, uh, it was fine, yeah. You blow a lot more cash than you do uh, buying P the Pasta Express, which is a great value. So. Yeah, it really, not bad at all. Yeah. All right, my number 95 is a game where you are 
pointing guns at each other. Bang, bang. Cash and Guns. Oh, okay. uh, second edition, I guess, is what it is. But Cash and Guns. Yeah. Cash and Guns is my number 95. Okay. 95. Um, I really like Cash and Guns. Cash and Guns, again, doesn't get played quite as much as I'd like to. We've played it a decent amount. Yeah. But just because you want, like, six, seven, eight people. You want to be kind of at the max. Yeah. yeah. It's more chaos. And it's and a craziness. game that you kind of have to feel out with people because you are pointing, like, guns at each other's faces. And it's fun if you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, like that, you yeah. know? And so... It, you got to kind of feel people out. It's just like a game, like, I, I'd i be hesitant to bring to our game night because we play it at a game store. Yeah. And it's like, people, I think they sell cash and guns there. So it's like, again, it, but it's just like, just in case, uh, just like, in case, just in case. But nonetheless, it is a super, super fun party game where everyone has a little foam gun and you have to point it at each other and you have a card in front of you and you either chose a click or a bang. Mm -hmm. If you chose a click, that means you're bluffing. You're not actually shooting them. If you chose a bang, that means you're going to shoot them. And then whoever you're pointing at has to choose whether or not they're going to take cover or whether or not they're going to stand there and just be like, do it. Do yeah. It. I know you're bluffing. Do it. Do it. I'm calling it. And then if you stand there and get shot, you get a wound and you can't get any loot. But if you stand there and they clicked you, yeah. and they have way more clicks than banks, then you get a share of the loot that's in the in the yeah. middle. I think there's eight rounds. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most loot is the one who wins the game. Just it's, just, it's just all bluffing and just... just <laughs> I'm yeah. fine. Sometimes you get three people pointing guns at you and you're like, <laughs> well, I don't know if all of you are bluffing, but... Uh, hmm. Stand up, I don't care. Yeah. I'll stay in the boss. If you get two wounds, you're out of the game. Yeah. So you can't get eliminated. But it's just silly, silly fun that everyone usually has a good time with. Yeah. Again, the player count mix, so it doesn't come out as often as I'd like it to. But nonetheless, I love Cash Guns. It's one of my yeah. favorite party games. Yeah. I absolutely adore it. It's, it's great so for a big fun. party because like, it is the best at like eight players. Yeah. It's just nuttiness. Just and <laughs> yeah, it's it, like... It's super cool. Yeah. And just very silly, light. Uh, it's a great party game. It's, it's great. so fun. When you get the right group of people together, it's a blast and a half. Yeah. You know, click, click, bang. Bang, bang. Boom. Score 94? 94? 94? 94? Boom. 94. 94. All right, Nick. Time to do some 94. What you got, bro? Oh, my gosh, dude. Like... Okay, 94 is a game. This is kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of similar to Cash and Guns in a lot of different ways. Um, All about that violence, huh? Oh, God, it's refreshing. Um, it's kind of similar to Cash and Guns in a way where it's like, it's probably not higher because it just can't hit the table very often. And that is pew, 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 Flick em Up. Ooh, Flick em Up is such dexterous? a good game by Pretzel Games. And it's a game, it's a big Wild West, like, yeah, crazy, pew, pew, There's cowboy like game. Hay bales and cacti and horses. Yeah, where you're and... flicking around stuff. You have these discs and you have these little cowboys and you're flicking little bullets at each other. And it's it's just, it's super fun. Um, and it's it's just, the problem is, is like, again, you probably want it with at least four to six people. Yeah. I don't want to play a full contingent of ten where everyone's controlling one player because there's five players. There's five yeah, little cowboys. It, it takes inside. too long. It just takes too long. But with like three or four in each team, it's really, really great. And I love it, love it, love it. Yeah. I just think it's a wonderful game. It just doesn't get out very much because also it's a huge setup. But yeah. whenever it does, it is one heck of an experience. It's I mean, awesome. it is just, it's so much fun. It's just everyone's Dying laughing, everyone's like, Yeah, and just yeah. flicking stuff around. We often, like, like bust it around the holidays. I think it's kind of like a good one for like family to play. Like, we played with our dad once, and it was hilarious. Oh, he because, had such like, a good time. He would go from like having like a great shot to the worst shot on earth, and like that's everyone who it's plays. So true. You go from like, You're like, I'm, I'm the best flicker of all time, yeah. and then you like do something that goes like an inch, you're like, I, I have no idea what happened. Yeah, I, what's with this table, man? Like, I guess I'm you know, it's just so fun and so. Uh, it's just a good time, man. Yeah, and it's I love just, all the wooden bits and stuff, or the plastic ones. It's just like you build this kind of big 3D board, and your table is the land, and you're just sliding around going for glory. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's so good. It just it yeah. doesn't get the table very often. It just can't, you know, it just can't. So my number 94 is a game that I have played uh, like 300 times probably at this point. Uh, it's a game that I just learned about over the summer it's a, a roll and write game and i do believe that next year there will be many more roll and writes on our list we kind of Probably. started playing a bunch of them right after we made our top 100 but anyway this one is gone um is my number 94 and it's because i have it in app form oh yeah you do i and still have the app like, i'm not going to i mean last night like every night when i go to bed i probably play like five or six games of it really yeah and just like kind of like, wind down it's like woohoo you know and it's just an easy little roll and write game. There's like no real theme or anything. It's just kind of maths and, and you're just trying to make the best out of whatever you roll. But like it kind of made the list because I've played it 
so many times. Yeah, you really have. You really have. And I, I feel like I've gotten worse and worse at it too. I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I liked it just fine. Again, I wasn't I wasn't super super like, oh man, I love this game. You like crushed at it though. That's I did. I did good at it too. I won, and I don't know. It was just. It didn't have any theme to it, and I think that was um, that kind of. A lot of rolling rights are just they're rolling rights. They don't really have a theme, but it's like mm-hmm. this one really doesn't. And and I I wish it had some kind of theme. And it and I don't know. It was fine. I I liked it just fine. I did really good at it. But I just I wish I don't know. It it didn't it didn't strike me as anything that noteworthy. I guess. Yeah. But it's fine. I have no problem with it. Fair enough. But hey, it made my ninety four. It's not like twenty four. Yeah. It's 94, but Gone and Clever is that. Let's get into 93. Bam. 93. 93 might hit us with a little bit of that 93 Dude, action. I got to tell you real quick, though, man. You know, this 93, I almost had a really bad experience. Really? You know what's the most dangerous thing for board games? Water. That's true. When you get water on that thing, get all warped and stuff. You're you know? never gonna recover. All right. So luckily, you know, rain water systems really protected oh, me in my time so of need. Right. And if you need to need to plug a leaky faucet or anything like that, rain water system is gonna keep that board game collection of yours safe. Totally, totally. You know. But my ninety three is Rajas of the Ganges. Wow. All right. And uh, this is a game that's just super beautiful. Uh, it is know, one of the prettiest games. Yeah. Yeah. It uses kind of like dice allocation and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and it's it's sort of a racing game because you have these basically two score tracks. One starts over yeah. here, one starts over here, and you want to get them to cross each other. So you want to kind of get both of the scores to the middle, essentially. And, and so it's just this interesting thing where you can kind of take different tacks like to get these to cross... And it was just a game that, like, I'll be perfectly honest. I played it. I was swimming. Yeah. All right. Uh, by you know design, not by accident. Uh, rainwater systems. Uh, and it, I, I, I can't even say for sure I knew exactly what I was doing. But it was a great game. This is kind of similar to Keyflower. I really want to play again and explore that first game. The art and everything is so incredible. Yeah. That like, uh, I, I just I know I want to get it and play it. And I, I can't even say I know how to play it well at all. Yeah. But I'm okay with that so far. Cool, cool, yeah. Raja the Gajis. All right, yeah. my number three is freaking Raja the Gajis. Boom! What are the odds? We had a cross on the same number? But not a cross, yeah, the, a double true Yeah, like a crossover. True. God, that's crazy. At 93. I was thinking, I was like, oh, is this going to happen? Like, we're going to have a crossover? This can't happen often. Not not this far down the list. I'm very surprised. By in that. the in the upper half, maybe because we have very again very similar tasting games. But oh my, my number ninety three is Raja the Khan. No one tuned in this video. Be like, your ninety three is gonna cross like a mouthful. Man. <laughs> like no one expected this. I know that's amazing. Oh my gosh, Raja the Khan is, is a great game. And yeah, I love the mechanic of like whoever can get their two score tracks to cross. Yeah. Is who won, and it's interesting because your thought you're like, oh, let me do equals, but like I didn't, I did yeah. one like this much, and the other one like this Which much. Which is a totally valid and strategy. I got beat out by one turn. Someone else, uh, a guy named Joe, who plays a lot, he beat me out by one turn, but he all it was the opposite way. He went all the way over here and then did this one like this, and he beat me out by one turn. Yeah, I kind of went toward the middle, and I did the worst by far. Yeah, there is a lot going on in this game. It is uh, a bit of a crazy game in terms of, like there's so many options. It's yeah. kind of worker placement, kind of dice allocation. You have your own kind of like Karuba looking board where you're like yeah. it's it's just there's so much going on in this game, but it's so intriguing. I really really love it. And I want to play it so much. And then it's just like, one, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Two, it's about a culture there's not very many games about. Thank God. I'm so tired of seeing games in the Mediterranean. I'm so tired yeah. of seeing Viking games. Oh, come on, I'm man. sorry. I love it. But, like, pick something else, there please. There are other things. And it's so <laughs> nice to have a nice, refreshing new theme yeah. about a different culture that we don't see much about. And I wish they would do that more. And, and, and Raja the Ganges is such a great example of, of man, just making a great game built around a great theme, built around great art. I mean, just it's just hitting on all cylinders, and I love it, love it, love it. Raj Lagani is also my 93. That is crazy. That is, I'm so surprised at that, dude. That's, <laughs> I thought maybe top 20 or so we're going to get a decent amount of crossover, but I never thought this high in the list. Yeah. Well, wow. We both clear, clearly need to play it more because I'll bet you they're, that will go up for yeah, both of us. for sure. Probably. With more plays. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Raj the Gandhi's. let's get into 29, 30, 20, 30, 92. I swear I'm dyslexic. I swear. I don't know what just happened. 92 is next. Sheesh. 92. 
All right, 92. We're almost done with this list. My number 92 is a game called Hot Shots. This is a mm. game and a theme that I wish was around more. Hot Shots <sighs> is about firefighters, but particularly about like forest firefighters. Yeah. That's the yeah. Forest firefighters. Wild yeah. firefighters. Alliteration is fun. But it's about uh, forest firefighters, and it's a really tough cooperative game. It's all these like hexagonal tiles that kind of get randomized, and there's different spots on the board that you're trying to put out fires, and fire is spreading like crazy, oh, yeah. and it can explode and stuff, and like there's push and also go out, and there's different winds. The winds changing, it'll gust, which means it'll push the fire like boom, boom, boom over tiles. And everyone, embers will just float and land and set a building on fire. Yeah, it's <laughs> insane, and you're and you're trying to. You're trying to put out the fires, and you're trying to to uh, do as well as you can. And everyone has a different role, which which you treat differently, kind of like uh, Flashpoint Fire Rescue or Pandemic. Yeah. Everyone has a different role that you're good at this, you're good at this, and it's a really really good implementation of a really great theme. It looks great, and I feel like no one really talks about this game. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's a game that should get a little more recognition than it does. I, I think it's a really wonderful, fun, tough co-op. If you like really hard co-ops, this is a great game for you because we love... I don't want a co-op that I can win easily. I want a co-op that destroys oh, it's me gotta be like the 98% of the time. Yeah. yeah. And this is one of those games. I really, really love Hot Shots. It's a great game, great theme, looks great. I love it. Hot Shots, 92. Boom. That's a good pick. Uh, for me, my 92 is a two-player game. Uh, where you're trying to, you're you're the cops and the robbers, all right. You're you're Sherlock Holmes, and you're Mr. Jack. Oh, uh, is my ninety two. Oh, so really? It's this okay. Great game where you're you're kind of in the streets of London and stuff like that. And if you're Mr. Jack, you're trying to hide and escape. And if you're on the other side, you're you're playing like a Sherlock and Watson. You're activating different people, and you're trying to basically get lines of sights down streets and trying to spot Mr. Jack, and then ultimately uh, corral. Uh, the Ripper himself, the Ripper. and it's just a it's just a cool game. It's a game that like seems insanely hard if you're the detectives, but you know if you're if you're Jack, you got to be really careful as well. And it's just like it was just a fun kind of take on like a hidden movement type of yeah. It's game. very interesting game. It's yeah, very because there's ultimately various people. If you're Mr. Jack, there's various people you have, and I'm in you on the other side are trying to weed out. Who These, could they're all be? suspects, but you don't know which yeah. one's actually the one you're looking for. So you're trying to like weed them out and stuff like that. Uh, it, it's just yeah it's super so it's like a hidden movement but everyone's out on the board yeah you just don't know which information is important you yeah know? And some like going to the light and that like it's it's very it's yeah. a very interesting take on hidden movement and it's done in a, in a pretty simple way it's not yeah. like a really oh. heavy game and I want to play there's a bunch of different versions of it and yeah. I would love to play more of them because we've only ever played like the OG Mr. Jack yeah. and I did like it a lot um, and I, it's one of the games I wanted it didn't make my list but I I do want to play it more because I found it very intriguing. Yeah. It's kind of how I am right now. I'm like, that was good and very intriguing, but I I'm not, know not entirely sure how much I like it, but I do like it. I know that. Yeah. yeah. It's just a fun little game. Uh, they have Mr. Jack Pocket as well, and there's an app version of that, which I played a few times, yeah. which is like really difficult as well. I'm not great at them, but I, I quite like them. Yeah. Uh, but I think I like Mr. Jack the best. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's just this little board, and you're just sitting on opposite sides of the board. Great two-player game. Yeah. And, you know, for us, like, we're often playing our games together. So if there's a good game that's great at two-player or made to be a two-player you know? game, it's going to be... What you do? It's Brooky Katuki, my dear. Brookie, Brookie Tukuku. You know? Love Brookie And we love him so much. So uh, Bruno Katala did it again with Mr. Jack, my number 92. 92. Let's get on to 91. Yeah. This is it for this list, baby. Woo! Get it. Nine. Ninety-one. Yeah. When you've got beautiful, untamable locks like mine, you're about to hit the red carpet at the hottest game convention in town. The only beauty accessory you need is big, sexy hair. Hit it, grip it, hit that red carpet, and game your heart out. Ah, oh, God, it's my eyes! So my number 91 is Wits and wagers really i thought that'd be higher on your list i mean here's the thing it's amazing it's super fun and now that we're playing it more because we play this live on twitch we do with people with, so the, with the chat yeah with you the join people. us on that you'll be able to play along with us now that we're doing that next year oh it's gonna be higher yeah for yeah sure for sure we made this list before we started doing that so you know you gotta honor the list that's where it is it's a great game great fun party game that is a trivia game, but it, you don't need to be great at trivia for it. No, no, no. Not at Which all. Is That's the best awesome. part about it. Yeah. Yeah. So they always have these random questions that are always number-based, and they're 
obscure. It was like, what was the heaviest ostrich ever recorded? No one knows that answer. No knows. <laughs> so everyone, you can play on teams, you can play individually, whatever you really want. Uh, everyone writes down their random guess, and then you order them uh, numerically from low to high, and then what you do is you bet on which answer you think is the closest without going over. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just super fun and you can like, you know, bet big and hopefully make a ton of money or you just blow all your cash and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, uh, it's just a, so fun. And now that we're playing it with like the chat and yeah, stuff, yeah. it's the funnest thing ever. I love it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's my number 91 with some wagers. All right, my number 91 is a roll and write. Mike had a roll and write on his list and this roll and write is actually one that we don't own, but it's called Metro X. Oh, yeah. Metro X is a great roll and write where you are trying to um, make tr like subway routes in uh, Tokyo or Osaka, I think is the other one. Yeah. But it's, it's a roll and write game, or in this case, a draw and write, because you're drawing cards and then you're writing stuff down. Right. But it's just a really tough, um, really good, um, a good roll and write that's just, it's very difficult, like a lot of roll and writes, and it, it just, the puzzle of trying to figure it out is always really, really fun. You can play it with an infinite amount of people, which is always really, really good. Right. We played, uh, we did a meetup at Gen Con. We played probably like 40 people or so. Um, totally we, we facilitated a big, like 40 person game. Super cool, super fun. Metro X, I love roll and writes. There's gonna be more and more and more of them on my list probably next year. It's, I, I absolutely love Several the genre, and um, I'm excited for what they come up with because every single one I've really enjoyed. Every yeah. single one. They're really cool. And it's fun when you have like in that one, you draw a card that gives you a number and you have to put, fill in this many spaces on one route. So once the card's revealed, then everyone can just kind of go in and do their thing all at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. it really is unlimited for how many people can play. If you've got a sheet of paper for them, then boom, you're good to go. Yeah. Super fun. Metro X is a great time. For yeah, sure. yeah. So that's my number 91, Metro X. And that is going to be it for this installment of The Top 10 that was 100 through 91 we're one tenth of the way there boom all right there's only nine more to go so we will have all the way down to number one let us know what you thought of these games in the comments below are any of these in your top 100 would you consider have you played them do you like them do you hate them why let us know in the comments below and then be sure to check out our youtube channel for more uh silliness Probably more hair like his. Yeah, probably more, probably more big sexy hair. Yeah, yeah check yeah. us out on Twitch. Um, as well where we play uh games, especially like with some wages, we play live with the chat and stuff like that. It's a really great time. But nonetheless, please be sure to um, continue watching this top hundred because we got nine more of these to go. We Indeed. want. Indeed. And thanks to Tom them. and the Dice Hour for letting us do this on your channel. We appreciate it, and we'll see you all in the next installment of our top one hundred games of all time. Peace.